Hi, I'm Aliana. I'm a UX designer. In today's video, I will teach you how to create an online design portfolio that looks like this. If you are a designer that wants to build a portfolio that is responsive, with full design control but no coding, and publish it to your custom domain, and all for free, then Designwear is the right product to use. Let's jump right into it. Please go to designware.io to get started. Let's click New Project and then put in the project's name and the project's goal. Once you are done, click Start Editing. You will see a page like this. On the top, we can switch between a mobile view, a tablet view, and a desktop view. On the left, you can see the pages in this website. Now we only have the new page. Let's change the name of this page to the home page. Then let's click the plus icon on the top left. Here, we can add elements such as text, spacer, line, image, and containers. We can also add text that has been set to a certain style, such as heading 1, heading 2, and paragraph 1, paragraph 2. There are also many templates to choose from. Now we're at the banner section. Let's go to the header section to choose a header for our portfolio. You can drag the header into the position or you can simply click on the header to put it on the page. Let's check the tablet view and the mobile view. Double click on the text box to make an edit. If you want to delete any element, right click on it and then select delete. Or press Ctrl delete on your keyboard. The edit you just made will show on different screen sizes. If you don't like the spacing of an element, you will need to adjust the margin, which is the outer space of an element, or the padding, which is the inner space of an element. To do that, please go to Layout and pay attention to the Spacing section. Click on the text again to select the text box. If you are confused about the difference, go to the Page Content page to see all the layers we've added to the page. We can see that the text is wrapped by a container, and they have different spacing settings. Containers are the key to organizing your layout. A container in a website is similar to a container in the real life. It helps to keep things into the right place. It's especially useful when you want to group multiple elements together and set their positions relative to each other. To delete the actual padding on the left, let's change the 10 pixel to 0 pixel, or simply type in a dash sign. The next step is to add a banner image to our portfolio. Let's hit the plus icon on the top left and then select Image. The element you add will automatically go to the bottom of the page. To change its location, simply drag the element in between existing blocks or inside an existing block. To replace an image, go to the Style page and then hit the Upload icon. Select the image you want for your portfolio banner. Now the image is here, but it's very small on the mobile view. So I will go to Layout and then change the height setting. I will change the unit from pixels to percentage, and then give it 90%. With this setting, the image will take up 90% height of our device, regardless whether we're using a mobile, a tablet, or a desktop. Next, let's put some introduction paragraph on top of our banner image. But instead of using an ordinary text box, I strongly recommend you to use heading 1 or heading 2. This will make future style adjustment way easier. So I will use a heading 1 and a paragraph 1 for the introduction paragraph. Don't worry if your page doesn't look right. Let's go to the page content page to double check the layers. Let's make sure the heading and the paragraph are at the same level underneath image. If we want these two elements to share the same background, then we need to wrap them by a container. Hit the plus icon again and then select containers with wrapping rows. Let's adjust the layers again. Put the container inside the image and put the text boxes inside the container. It helps to keep things into the right position. And the default color of a container is transparent. To change its color, let's first select the container, then go to the style page. Then let's select background color and then change the color accordingly. Once you are done, update the text content and change the color so that it's clear on your background. Now we're getting closer to the look. Let's check the view on different devices. The default 30 pixel padding looks too large on a mobile device, but too small on a desktop device. So I'll readjust these paddings manually. First, changing all of them back to a dash sign. And also for the two text boxes. 
Then I will adjust the width of the text boxes. Instead of using fit content, I will set it to 80%. Then select the container layer and then center align everything inside by clicking the center align icon. It's looking better. Finally, select the container and then select this bottom align icon to bottom align all the elements inside this container. Increase the padding of the container for the top and bottom. You can hold shift to adjust them together. Increase the bottom margin for heading one to give it some space here. Great. Now we're done with the top section of our portfolio. Now let's work to showcase our case projects. Let's add the elements that's needed for a section. I will use a heading tool for the project's title. Align to divide the content. Paragraph 1 for the description of the project. And paragraph 2 for the description of my role. And an image to showcase the project. Please replace the content with your actual content. Now let's try to adjust the layout. On the tablet and desktop version, we want the text to appear on the left side and the image to appear on the right. The way to do that is to wrap all the text inside a container. It's kind of like organizing our drawers. If we don't want the items in our drawer to move around each time we open it, then let's use containers to hold items into their position. I'm also going to set the paddings back to zero and then readjust them later. Now let's adjust the levels of these layers and make sure they're in the right relationship. The heading, the line, and the two paragraphs should go inside the container, and the image should go outside the container. Now we want the container to be on the left side and the image to be on the right side. To do that, I will select the container. I will set the width to 50%, and then set its margin to 5%. Then I will select the image and then set the width to 45%. Now 50 plus 5 plus 45 equal to 100% of the space but they're still not side by side. Because we didn't tell these elements how are they going to arrange themselves. So to fix this problem, let's wrap the container and the image by another container. Here, I'm adjusting the four paddings all together by holding Command. Let's adjust the layers again. Make sure the old container and the image should be wrapped by the new container. Now that we have this new outer container, I'm also going to select this new container and then set the width to 80%, center align it, looking much better. Now I will set the text paddings back to zero and then readjust them later. Let's take a look on the mobile version. We need a new rule so that these elements doesn't appear to be side by side on the mobile version. The way to do that is to set a minimum width to the text container. For now, I'm going to set it to 300. Now we can see that the text is taking up all the space. But what about the image? Let's select the outer container and then go to the bottom right and turn on Fill Rows. Now, we're telling the image and the text to take up the entire row. And this section looks way better on all devices. Finally, let's clean up the left section. We want the heading, the line, and the explanation paragraph to stick to the top. And we want the description of our row to stick to the bottom. We need to use two additional containers to achieve this. The top container should wrap the top three elements and the bottom container should wrap the bottom element. So now we have an outer container that wraps the entire section. Inside the outer container, we have a container that wraps everything on the left side. And in this container, we have another container for top elements and another one for bottom elements. Let's select the top container and then top align it. Then select the bottom container and bottom align it. Finally, let's adjust the spacing. For the line, I'm going to adjust the margins to 15 pixels for top and bottom. For the bottom container, I will add a 30 pixel margin at the bottom. For the top container, I'm going to add another 30 pixel margin at the top. For the heading, I will give it a 10 pixel margin on the bottom to give it some extra space. It's looking better now. To improve the mobile view, I will add a 35 pixel margin to the paragraph. Finally, let's adjust the spacing for this entire section. Let's select the outer container and give it a 40 pixel top margin and then a 60 pixel bottom margin. Now we are done with one section. We can then duplicate this section to showcase our other projects. 
select the outer container, hit the three dots icon, and then select duplicate. Let's do it twice because we want to showcase three projects. Then simply replace the content for the other two projects. Looking good. Now we're almost there. Now, if you want to add another small heading on top of your project, simply add another text element. I'm going to use a paragraph two. For its layout, I will again use 80% as the width and center align this element. We don't really need the paddings on the left side and the right side, so I will get rid of those. I will replace the content with selected work. Then I will move this element on top of the first container for our project. The spacing doesn't look great for me, so I'm going to get rid of the paddings and add a top margin for 10%. Using a percentage here can help the spacings look right across different screen sizes. Now we're just one footer away to complete this portfolio. If you want to use a footer template, please go to the headers bar and then choose a template that's closer to your design. For me, I'm not going to use a template, but I will use these social icons inside this template. To create a footer from scratch, I will use a container and then a text element. For the text element, I decided to change it to heading two. To do it, please go to the style page and then change it there. For my footer, I will make sure my container wraps the text and also the icons. I will drag the icon layer from the template to my container and then delete the original template. Then let's select the footer container and then choose space between. This will make sure the left component is stick to the left and then the right component is stick to the right. Finally, let's make some final spacing adjustment to this footer. Now we have everything we need on this portfolio homepage. The next step is to adjust the style of this portfolio, which include the font, the font sizes, and the colors. This is similar to building up a design system. Basically, check all the types of text you've been using and then adjust their styles. For example, I'm using heading 6 for the website's title. So I will go to quick add and then go to heading 6, click on the pen icon, then adjust the styles to fit my design. There are different units to the font sizes that you can use. For me, I prefer pixel, so I will change it to pixel. If you click on the text icon, you will see this field expanding into two fields. This will help you to set a minimum font size, which applies to the mobile devices, and then a maximum font size, which applies to desktop. Now for the color, I suggest you to replace what's in the setting so that you don't have to change the color one by one. And please don't forget to click apply once you finish changing the style. Now we just updated the style for heading 6. So all the heading 6 that we've been using on this website will change accordingly. And if we want to change other elements to heading 6, the style will be the same as what we just said it. Now that we've updated heading 6, let's do the same for heading 1, heading 2, paragraph 1, and paragraph 2. After updating the text, let's also update the colors for other elements, such as the icons and the background color for different sections. To change the background color, select that element, go to style, and then change the background color. And this wraps up the final step to our today's tutorial. Make sure you check your design across different screen sizes before publishing it. Here, I'm double checking the tablet view, and now the mobile view. And it's ready to go. So, how did it go? Feel free to share your portfolio link in the comment section below because we are excited to see your work. If you have any question, contact support at designware.io. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thank you so much and see you next time.